A crisis has been brewing in the EU and the impact of which has been felt deeply in the countries which have been economically devastated. It has now been confirmed that there has been an intentional exacerbation of this in order to destabilize Europe. You came here for the truth. Today we are going to look at what is happening in Europe at this time. I want to focus on two articles and then just mention a few other points. NGOs are smuggling immigrants into Europe on an industrial scale for two months using marinetraffic.com. We have been monitoring the movements of ships owned by a couple of NGOs using the data from this website here. We have kept track of the daily arrivals of African immigrants into Italy. It turned out that we were witness to a big scam and an illegal human trafficking operation. And you know that the trafficking, whether it's for sex trafficking or just trade in general, that this is very big business. It's not allowed to get mainstream news and it becomes very difficult to get that information. But we know it's big business. We know that it's everywhere. We know what the elite really want. I mean, this is the high level stuff here, something I don't really like to cover too often. NGOs, smugglers, the mafia, in cahoots with the European Union, have shipped thousands of illegals into Europe under the pretext of rescuing people, assisted by the Italian Coast Guard, which coordinated their activities. A lot of this information has been released. Now, some would say that this is hearsay, but let me just get into the article, the focus article of today. And it's this. George Soros secretly rushes to Italy as NGOs activity in the Mediterranean now face political and judicial scrutiny. There are a lot of claims about George Soros and what he's up to. Some of it is an absolute fact that cannot be denied. I want to cover a lot of points from this here. I want to try to move through it quickly. And then after that, I'm just going to mention a few things very quickly and then end the video. Please stay tuned here. In the past few weeks, the transport of migrants from the African shores has become the case of national importance for Italy and is now under investigation from the prosecutor of Catania, who recently testified, and it goes on. Harsh criticism of the activities of the NGOs. By the way, this is a very well-documented article that I suggest you check out if you want to refute any of this or if you're just interested. Has become the opposition from the opposition parties, normally more neutral on Im immigration issues, and it goes on. Yet a new element were further exacerbate the situation. George Soros, a billionaire who was incredibly active politically on both sides of the Atlantic, met in secrecy with the Prime Minister less than a week after the latter had commented on the NGO's activities. The meeting was not listed on the website, of course. So what has happened? Well, they talk about this here George Soros had penned multiple arguments in favor of immigration, as he always does. He's always on the side trying to be the good guy, supposedly, but really the actions are always nefarious. Look at what happens with his organization, Move On, and I'll mention that in a moment. Suggesting that Europe should welcome, can you believe this, at least one million refugees a year. The only thing that that would do is destabilize Europe. I understand on one side of it how there's the humanitarian effort. You want to bring a whole bunch of people in, shelter them, clothe them, get them jobs, get them working. They'd be able to work in many of the jobs that people in these countries don't want to do. And I could see how that could be seen as beneficial. But if you bring a million refugees a year, it's not sort of an organic flow. The assimilation won't happen. You're going to have major problems. And you can see that taking place right now. 
I'm not going to give my opinion on it. I think that a million refugees a year is a bad idea. That's the only thing that I'll say. And I know many of you would agree. Some of you may not. I'd like to hear your thoughts on that. If you if you think that Europe can handle a million a year, I, I'd like to know how. And I'm open to suggestions. And that the EU should create EU, think about this, EU bonds to support the attendant expenses. EU bonds, more garbage to pay off the situation here. This is just unbelievable. He's no stranger to NGOs either. One of them, Migrant Offshore Aid Station, facing the harshest criticism, receiving a half a million dollars from Avaz, another NGO, look at that, co-founded by Move On, an online community receiving donations from none other than George Soros himself. They've made some very good connections in here. As I've said, this is a well-documented article. Save the Children, another NGO involved in the Mediterranean migrant shipping lists among its partners, Open Society Foundation, George Soros' primary NGO. Finally, even this one right here, listed among the partners of Open Society and the Soros Network. Soros had already been named by Lega Nord uh, as the secret financier behind the NGOs as well-timed arrival is bound to create further controversy. And it goes on. It's very clear what is happening right here. Why would they want to do this? Are they trying to be nice? I mean, think about this. Forget about the opinions. Forget about what's happening. Judge it for yourself. Do these countries care about the people who are suffering in places like Syria and Libya? Do the governments of these countries like Italy like Germany and others, do they care about them? And I believe that the answer, this is my opinion, the answer is no. And I would like to also add absolutely no. Because you have people suffering in these countries already. Look at Italy. They are in dire straits right now. They're doing terribly. And it's getting worse. You look at Portugal, you look at Spain, you look at Greece. My goodness, Greece. Why wouldn't these countries want to help their own people first before shipping in migrants intentionally and then trying to be able to deal with feeding them and clothing them and everything else? I'm just saying sort of, you know, what's the reasoning behind this? And to me, the only reasoning is that it's not the governments themselves it's their handlers above them that are doing this intentionally to destabilize these nations one by one so we can have the dominoes fall and what happens when they fall we can bring in a crisis and that crisis can be used as an opportunity you see what i'm saying about that i hope you'll agree with me i want to know your opinion absolutely want to know your opinion on exactly what I just said. Oh, no, quickly just want to note a few other points here. Obviously, the situation in Syria is terrible. The people are suffering. Russia, Iran, and Turkey on Thursday signed an agreement on setting up four safe zones in Syria that the United Nations described as promising step to wind down the brutal six-year war. What I find interesting about this is was Syria even involved in this? I mean, is that really happening? The country is basically, nobody is factoring in what Assad wants. And I think that the country is completely in bedlam. It's in chaos at this time. There's, even in the major cities, there's nothing of sanity happening right now what does that say about the future of this anyway i'm just chasing this and, and seeing what happens i don't see this getting anywhere good i know that this may be seen as a, as a good step but i still see all of the isis and al-qaeda fighters going in to these places from iraq from syria and the surrounding areas 
and they're simply destabilizing these nations and they're being they're, this is being done with by the funding provided by the US and, and all these other countries moving into this the United Arab Emirates I just thought this was interesting just wanted to mention it they're going to drag an iceberg from Antarctica to solve the water shortage set to last 25 years. So their plan is basically take a huge iceberg, drag it all the way to the UAE, bring it there, and then they can chip big pieces off and use that as drinking water. Now, that's one heck of an operation. I don't know if it's even possible, but that's that shows you how bad the situation is. I mean, they try to produce rain in the desert by, you know, geoengineering. That was successful, but obviously, what are the long-term effects of that? It's going to be terrible. So they decided to chop off a piece of an iceberg and bring it in. It's going to take a long time, of course, to get it there but that's one possible plan i would just also like to mention the fact that when you build entire cities in the middle of the, of the desert where people simply shouldn't be living you end up in these crises that's the way i see it anyway and then this i mean my goodness i i covered how antibiotics are now at the very very last line there's no stronger antibiotics available than what is on the market right now. They're not working on anything new, except now scientists genetically engineer baker's yeast to produce penicillin molecules. Still working on what you could say is older technology, but they have now genetically engineered it, literally creating a new level of antibiotics for people to ingest that is now genetically modified. I mean, they just don't stop. They, they don't stop. And the way I see it is people are getting more sick, people are getting more poor, and everything's just getting worse. And the solutions that we have that we're provided with are provided by the people, the billionaires, and those that are in control of the system, the puppet masters. Should we take their advice or should we run for the hills? You decide. If you found this video informative, please give me a thumbs up. Last but not least, if you found this video informative, then I know you'll find my books, The Money GPS, and my new release, Global Economic Collapse, even more informative. My first book is basically about the four asset classes. I get into a lot of the situations about how to profit from each of those asset classes, so a chapter for each one. And then in the new book, which is a much shorter book, it's about 110 pages, very easy read, but it gets into The Money GPS strategy, which is essentially tax incentives, reducing your debt, and how to become self-sufficient. That's the way to evade this monetary system, which is controlled by the elite, by the billionaires of this world who aim to destabilize everything. So we need to become self-sufficient so that during this destabilization process, we are going to be sheltered from it. If you want to look through the books, just go to Amazon. They have this look inside feature that will allow you to flip through the pages of these books to see if you like them. Take care.